Welcome to Bodcast, the Business of Dentistry podcast, brought to you by Practice Plan. Bodcast delivers the best business advice, real life stories, and practical hints and tips to make your practice a more profitable and sustainable business. And now, here's your host. Hello, and welcome to Bodcast. My name's Hazel Dockery, and um, with me today is Sheena Lochnane from Bridge to Aid. Uh, Sheena's and Bridge to Aid is a, a, a longtime friend of Practice Plan, so we're going to have a catch up because quite a number of things have changed as far as Bridge to Aid's work has gone and strategy over the past few years. So, Sheena, thank you very much for joining us. Do you want to just explain what's been happening sort of post COVID as far as Bridge to Aid is concerned? Yeah, of course. So thanks so much for um, inviting me along. Um, yeah, I get very enthusiastic when I'm talking about British trade, so I'll, I'll kind of try and summarise it as best as possible. Um, so most people will know us for um, having been training clinical officers, so healthcare workers in Tanzania since 2004. So this is our 20th anniversary. Um, can't quite believe it's been that long. Um, but yeah, Ian and Andy Wilson founded us uh, back in 2004. And since that time, we've been training clinical officers, mostly through um, volunteers. So we were facilitating about 100 volunteers a year to go out to, to train clinical officers on our programs obviously yeah. 2020 hit um, and those programs had to stop overnight so we cancelled everything um, it was a it was quite a difficult time as it was for everybody um, mm. but what it did for us was really give us time to think about what we stood for what we wanted to do how we wanted to work our kind of strategy our red lines all those sorts of things our, our theory of change as it were and with limited resources which you know every small charity has limited resources what what could make the biggest impact so that's what we spent the next few years um thinking about so yeah in um in the meantime because we felt that um we we wanted to kind of look at what we could do rather than what we couldn't so we ran some global oral health webinars we did some um we ran we ran some workshops around infant oral mutilation, um, which is a practice carried out in some parts of, of Tanzania by traditional healers. Um, so we were doing some education workshops around stopping infant oral mutilation to stop children dying of sepsis, to stop the kind of HIV contamination and all the ramifications of infant oral mutilation. Um, but really, we were trying to think, you know, of our core programs, we're, we're a training organisation. How could we use our unique skills to make the biggest difference? So in Tanzania, for example, there are um, 600 dentists for a population of 70 million people. Um, but I mean, that you, you've told me that and I was yeah. astonished. It's no wonder that you're needed there, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And there are some people that are living in remote rural areas that will never see a dentist. Um, yeah, and certainly up until now, we'll never have a hope of seeing a dentist. So, you know, what can we do in that situation? Can we increase access? Can we prevent disease happening in the first place? Um, you know, how can we kind of tackle that huge dental desert? Um, yeah. So we we were, as I say, running a couple of programs and doing some online training for dental therapists in Malawi. Um, then in January of this year, we were invited, um, so I went out to spend some time with one of our new partners, Thedi, um, but also the Assistant Clinical Director for Medical Services, so like the, clinic, the um, Chief Dental Officer of Tanzania, and I went out and spent yeah. some time with him in January to say, how can mm -hmm. we help, how can we support your national oral health policy? So that's kind of yeah. where we came to then. Um, so shall I carry on with? Well, yes. Um, I mean, what what happened? What was the result of your conversation with that person? Because I'm assuming that, uh, uh, or I've heard that practices sometimes not all charities will go and seek approval. They'll just sort of like swoop in, do their job, and then expect sort of plaudits. Whereas, yeah. I'm assuming that your your approach was was welcomed. No, absolutely. So one of the kind of key um, threads of all our work is around. Uh, localization and working hand in hand with the Ministry of Health, both in Tanzania and Malawi, um, local partners on the ground. Our partners are now our strategic partners. So those are the guys that are running the programs that are making all the decisions. We're just there to support them. So localization is really, really important to us, shifting the power from you know, making decisions in boardrooms in Birmingham 
um, yeah. to that power really being in the hands of the local communities and the local people so really really important to us to get permission and ask the Ministry of Health what do you want so I had a, myself and my husband were there for, uh, for a week in January um, and right at the start of the conversation with the Chief Dental Officer I kind of said to him you know how can we help and he said he looked me in the eye and he said you know what so many charities are coming and just pulling teeth out um if someone's in pain the only thing the only treatment they can have is is having their pulled teeth pulled out and absolutely that's very much needed and a solution but he said you know you don't do that in your own country you prevent disease you carry out restorative work you're trying to save teeth not lose them so why yeah. do you come here and take out teeth and it was a it was a massive kind of light bulb moment for me and for the rest of the team so our team had shrunk last September um, so we're very much relying on our UK volunteers and our clinical team here so we kind of talked about that and and he said you know I I really want you to continue to bring volunteers because that's something that we had stopped despite the kind of negative connotations for us about using volunteers in that way he said with 600 dentists we don't have the workforce to do the training so we really yeah. really need bridge to aid with your experience and your unique contribution um, to still come and to kind of help with that training so we're now running in Tanzania I focus on Tanzania at the moment we're running three different programs um, mm -hmm. one is still around that stopping ending infant oral mutilation because that's absolutely vital uh, and that continues we've got a partner Dr Neela Jackson who is, does all of the training and we had some of our team go out a couple of weeks ago to do some oral health education as part of those workshops um, so far um, we've trained around about 16,000 people in Tanzania around the the, the um, dangers of infant oral mutilation and we'll continue to do that into the next couple of years yeah um, the other program is is really focusing on prevention so preventing disease so we are working with our partners study to train um, teachers and community health workers in some simple simple prevention messages that they can then cascade into the schools and into the communities so if you train one teacher in one school those messages will then get to 15,000 children which will then be passed on to their families so we find that kind of cascade yeah. model is the most effective going back to that idea of being a you know a small organization with low resource um so that's one program we we piloted that two weeks ago and it was uh, really really successful and, and an exciting program um and hopefully that will then roll out into the rest of the country. And then the third programme is around supporting and training dental therapists, because, as I say, they've opened seven new dental therapy schools recently in Tanzania, and they are encouraging those therapists into the remote and rural areas where there is no dental care. But each therapist could be responsible for a couple of million people, so one dental therapist. Wow. So they really need some support some CPD, some training that they're trained um, in therapy school and then go straight out and are often on their own without any peer support. So we're doing some skills training with those dental therapists um, on the ground. What was so we will be treating patients at the same time, but also some um, remote mentoring. So rather than training and walking away, we'll be doing six months of remote mentoring with those dental therapists to give them support um, in really, really challenging situations. Um, yeah I mean yeah. And what is the scope of practice of a dental therapist over there is it the same as one over here no it's not actually so the scope of practice up until November last year was was still very different to our dental therapist so they can um they can do fillings extractions of adults and children um ev pretty much everything that a therapist here can in the UK can do so their scope was quite wide but actually in November that scope was increased to include single rooted endo. Right. Um, so the chief is very keen. He's he's spending a lot of money um, on getting health clinics, district clinics equipped with dental chairs, dental x-rays. Um, and he has a real commitment to that and people that can that can um, look after that equipment. And he's asked us to come up with a national training program because dental therapists can do those endos if they've had recognised training. So they've asked us to put together a training program that can roll out throughout the country. So those therapists can offer can offer endo. But Tanzania is really changing. It's really exciting. Oral health is really on the agenda. It was discussed in Parliament last week. Um, and there's a really big kind of push to 
increase the oral health um, of the Tanzanian population. And certainly we are, we're seeing that in, in Malawi as well in our partnerships um, that we're involved in in Malawi. So yeah, exciting times. It must be great to finally sort of see some results. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and you know, all the work we've, we've been doing for the last 20 years, um, it has been absolutely great and we've those clinical officers are trained and they're able to get people out of pain but it's actually yeah seeing that systemic shift yeah uh, in policy and at government level is is really really good and it's it's great to be part of that conversation obviously we're from the UK so we can only be part of that conversation it needs to be led and directed from Tanzania but if if there's any way we can support that we will so yeah it is um it's exciting it's great to see be part of a working group to kind of look at overall oral health services in, in Tanzania. So yeah, it, it, it's great. And we've got lots of amazing volunteers and people behind us and supporters like Practice Plan, you know, that, that allow us to do what we're doing. Um, mm. Yeah, that's brilliant. Now, I believe you're not just um, uh, working abroad, though, you're actually doing stuff a little bit close to home as well. Yeah, we are. We are for the first time. So um, a couple of years ago, we were approached by Professor um, Dave Dimmock from Bristol University. So British Wade's office is just outside Bristol. Um, and we've got lots of links with Bristol Dental School. My husband works there and a number of our volunteers are clinical lecturers there. Um, and he said we'd like to kind of improve our outreach. So they were doing lots of outreach. The new dental school in Bristol was opening and they wanted to really kind of improve improve the offering in in the city where there are issues and as we know there's a lack of access yeah um, and certainly to some left behind communities so we had a conversation and um i said well what we're doing in malawi where we were training therapists to train village volunteers in um oral health education and prevention messages would that would that work in bristol um so we've been doing that for a couple of years now so mm -hmm. the first so years one and two when students first come on board so they have a kind of a circular curriculum so they have themes that run through the whole uh, five years so in the yeah. first year we've been talking to students about social responsibility and um, global oral health and the wider global kind of landscape um, and then in the fourth year we've been working with some of the uh, academic staff in or and the students so they're putting together a training program to go into a chosen community in the city and train oral health ambassadors so that's exactly what we've done in Malawi mm -hmm. because they're the best people to reach their own communities so for example a group of Somali mothers so that's one of the groups that um, Bristol Dental School have been involved with the best people to teach that community about oral health are the Somalian Kind of mothers and the leaders in that community so we're training them to then cascade it out the last couple of years that's been focusing on care homes so the dental students have been going in to train care home um, staff so yeah it's, it's interesting it's interesting that the work that we've piloted in Malawi we're now bringing to the UK to try and make a, a change here and then hopefully we can uh, move that into other dental schools and other areas in the country because that's been a really successful program yeah, yeah, it sounds brilliant. So you you rely on volunteers, don't you? I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people who would listen to a podcast like this and think, oh, how do I get involved? What 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 can I do? Absolutely, absolutely. And now that we've had our extra permission um, and you know been asked to bring our volunteers, absolutely. So there are more opportunities at the moment as well for than we've had before with um, for hygienists, therapists, and dental nurses, especially those with a interest in oral health education or if they've got their extra qualification yeah. um, in training those teachers and community health workers so mm -hmm. actually more opportunities um, for those volunteers which is great because we don't always need dentists on the programs and um, so we're <laughs> relying on, on, on those as well so that's great and then also as I say for dentists to do the skills training on the ground with the therapists but also committing to six months of mentoring because we don't want to just train and leave it's about a long-term you know relationship so anyone with medical education qualifications or experience are brilliant but also we can obviously do some training and support if, if it's something that someone's interested in we can we can support them in that all right and they they would just contact you via your website then yeah, if you go to the website, um, there's a get involved tab. And then if you drop that down, it's volunteer. And there's a there's a 
form on there you just fill out your details and then we'll be in touch yeah. And also, will you be in a charity? I'm assuming fundraising is another issue. Absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. With every, you know, I'm in a lot of charity come networks. All charities are finding it really, really difficult at the moment. Yeah. Um, and we very much rely on the dental community. So our community fundraising is all by the dental community, dental practices, but also um, our kind of corporate supporters such as yourselves. Um, so yeah, there's lots of ways we can help you do fun activities to raise money or there's sponsorship opportunities if, if anyone wants to sponsor the programme. Um, it's really good obviously for your ESGs and your social responsibility within practices. So we, we've got people that can, can help you with that. But yes, if we don't have the funds, unfortunately we can't do the work. So that is really, really important to us. No, so yeah, so we need you to continue with this, don't we? So yeah, I urge people to get in touch and, and support you however they can. Thank you. Be great. All right then. Great. Well, it's been great to speak to you, Sean, and thank you very much for bringing us up to date on uh, Bridge to Aid. And uh, hopefully, we can we can have an update on how things are going in the future. That that would be fantastic. Thanks so much for having me.